Hi everyone, my name is Miguel de Villa. I'm an applications engineer here at Go Engineer, and today I'm here to present a quick tip on how to animate a rolling contact in SOLIDWORKS using nothing more than the ordinary assembly mates. So, without further ado, let's get started with our example here. So let's take a look at this example, and what I have here is a 3D printed planetary gearbox. Typically, when these are assembled in SOLIDWORKS, you use gear mates and the appropriate coincident and concentric mates to have each of these components rotate about a fixed central axis. And the gear mates make it look like there's physical contact between these components driving their rotation, but all it's doing is actually controlling the rotation of each of these components about their axes. What I have done here is I've fixed the center part and actually have it set so that the movement of the planet gears are driven by the ring gear and move along a path defined about the sun gear. Take a look. This is how I've simulated a rolling contact within SOLIDWORKS. You can also do this using what's known as a motion study simulation, but I didn't want to get into that today. I wanted to show you how I got around sending it to a motion study by just using the appropriate types of path mates. So let's get started with that. So let's take a look at this unfinished version of my planetary gear assembly. I've taken the liberty of making visible all the necessary sketch points, sketch geometry, and reference plane geometry I need to properly place and mate my planet gear within the context of the larger assembly. To review, what I'm going to do is that I'm first going to use positioning mates to get this planet gear in the right position and in such an orientation that it looks like it's not interfering but rather meshing with the other gears. Remember, when we do a mechanical mate, what we have is where it will start in all of its uh, motions and rotations. If you want a good looking mechanical mate, then you have to make sure all your components are starting off in the right position. So let's begin. I'm going to go to my mate command and make sure I use for positioning only because again this is just my initial positioning. I'm going to use some coincident mates to make sure that this planet gear is in the right place and very conveniently I can see that the way it's oriented with respect to the other two parts, it's already good. It's not interfering. So when I finally create my mechanical mates, it'll look really good. So now I need to start making my path mate. And the path mate takes two inputs, a point and a path for that point to move along. As this planet gear rolls along the surface of the sun gear, its center moves in this path described by this sketch circle right here. I highly advise that when you use this method, you use either circles, lines, or a spline, because the path mate is looking for one single line entity selection. It won't work when you have compound lines that are a sum of lines, arcs, fillets, and so on. So. I'm going to start with my path mate and go to advanced mates and locate it right here. I'm going to select the middle of my planet gear as my component vertex and for my path selection I'm going to select this sketch circle. Paying attention to some of the options, let's take a look at what it has to offer. We want to set it to free. Free means that it's free to travel all along throughout and as many loops of this sketch circle as it goes through. If we had set it to distance along path or percent along path, then it would be fixed at a certain position or within a particular range, which is not what we want right now. Pitch and yaw control essentially controls the spin, the spin in this direction, for the most part. If we set it to follow path, then we would set the rotational motion of the planet gear either to be always tangent to the direction of the sketch circle or perpendicular to it, much like how a roller coaster follows a roller coaster track. We don't want that right now, so we're going to leave it free. 
we're actually going to leave this free so that we can control it with our mechanical mates. And finally, we have roll control. Roll control determines how it's spinning in this direction. We don't need to worry about that right now because in this assembly, I have this front face of my planet gear flat and parallel to the front face of my other two. So it's always nice and flat. Again, this is just another example of how you can combine the path mate with other uh, mate types to constrain the geometry in the exact way you want it. So now, let's create our path mate. Now we're going to make our mechanical mates. And this is a simple matter of selecting the sketch circles that are a representation of the pitch diameters of each of my components. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, I'm going to make sure that's reversed so that it's spinning in the right direction. Okay, now that I have all three of those mates nice and set, just the way I wanted to, let's check the motion. As we can see, now the component vertex, the center of my planet gear, is following the path. In addition, it's rotating in the correct um, orientation, or rather, rotational rate so that it looks like it's rolling on the surface of that sun gear. And with that, we have now completed this little tutorial and quick tip on how to create a rolling contact within SOLIDWORKS without using a motion study, but instead just using ordinary mates. This is Miguel de Villa. I'm with GoEngineer. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.